Hey everyone, this is John with Redenso. And I'm Mindy. And today we're going to give you a quick look at the supercomputer that we use to train um, Ray, the artificial intelligence that's going to live in Thea. And the name is Skynet of our supercomputer. I, I feel kind of like if we didn't make a reference when we're naming our AI training supercomputer yeah. to Skynet that we, we wouldn't be a real tech company. <laughs> Um, no, so, it's, it, so it's, it's funny though because we had, um, I forget what company it was, but we did uh, some collaboration with another local company and uh, I think it was to shoot some video actually. It might have even been when, when Vortex came out last time and the, uh, the engineer, the video production engineer said, oh yeah, we call our, all, our, all of our service Skynet as well. So I, I realize we're not quite as original as we thought we were. But I mean, who else has a supercomputer? It's true. And ours is original. training AI, yeah. so it counts for something. We're definitely cooler. But. Um, so yeah, we're going to talk about the difference between <clears throat> Ray a little bit, but more really based around Skynet. Um, we're going to give you a behind the scenes uh, sneak peek at what it looks like. Just show off some hardware. Yeah. And uh, we'll talk about build versus buy. Um, yeah. It's a, it's a real consideration. I mean, yeah. so when... it. I thought it was interesting when we were trying to figure out what type of computer we needed to uh, build or buy to do this. There is a decent amount of research out there about what makes it faster to train um, neural networks, but everybody's application is so different and there's, there's different types of training models that you can use and all of them take different components that are, are more important. And um, I've, I've been a computer enthusiast for a long time. I've been building computers forever, both uh, for myself and I used to do it on the side for some, some small corporations when I was younger. So I had a decent idea of how to build a good computer, but I've never built a computer for training AI before. Yeah. That was kind of a whole, a whole new thing. It's fun to go pick out parts. It is. Um, <laughs> if there's one thing I'm good at doing, it's, it's spending money. Um, I can attest to that. Yep. But you, you know, you also don't want to waste it. You, you got to make sure that you're, you're doing it right. And what I found was that a lot of, um, a lot of articles out there, that did benchmarking and, and performance for neural networks were mostly about um, image or computer vision, like image recognition. Mm -hmm. So they weren't focused towards like training radar signals. Now, don't get me wrong, there's still some similarities between them, but we're not using one of like the famous, um, like Google publishes uh, some of their, their neural networks. There's famous neural networks like, like ResNet and these other ones that we're doing it from scratch, so we did have some different optimizations that we had to do. Um, Which is crazy, thinking about seriously building a neural network from scratch. Like, this doesn't happen overnight. Yeah, and you, you, we don't know what architecture's best. I mean, it, that was all Sterling's work. Um, but while he was kind of figuring out how to build it, um, how to build a neural network, I had to figure out what was the best components for the computer. And the just to give you some context, we've seen training times uh, sometimes when we were just training one BSM versus one gun, it would take five hours to train. Sometimes it would take overnight to train in the beginning when we were really not efficient. Um, now, now we've got it to the point where we've got it down to like 15 or 20 minutes. Now that can change day to day as we make tweaks to the neural network, as we make tweaks to how much data we're loading, what type of data we load in. But the bottom line is you need a computer that is fast on the CPU side, uh, the CPU side because we do a lot of pre-processing to the data. Mm -hmm. And then you need fast GPUs or video cards, uh, which is what does the bulk of the actual work training the AI. So for those that aren't maybe <coughs> super familiar with, you know, how Skynet, you know, trains and, uh, you know, or how it works uh, fully, uh, a question comes up a lot like, so what happens when a new police gun comes out uh, for radar or um, the 2023, you know, Mazda MX-36 comes out <laughs> and it has a different BSM signal than what? we currently know to be true. It's a very valid concern. How does that apply to Skynet? Yeah, so we would go out and we'd, we'd record that uh, data, we'd, we'd take a recording of that radar signature, and then we'd bring it back. Now that recording that we take is, is a very large file. Um, that's, again, this varies depending on how fast we're sampling it, but we've gotten it sometimes where um, we were writing to disk at 10 gigabytes per second, and that's actually faster than any hard drives or solid state drives can do. So we had to create something called a RAM disk as a buffer to store that data. So we really are talking you know, scientific grade um, computing here, both in terms of processing power and storage requirements. So then once we have that data, we feed it into Skynet and then it crunches it, sends it off to the video cards and then Ray is trained that way. Um, and a, a computer to, 
if you just bought one off the shelf, there are companies that do that. Um, a comparable computer would probably be about $50,000 to $60,000, not including the storage. This is just our training computer from a vendor. And I didn't have that kind of budget. And we managed to save um, almost half of that by building it ourselves. That's incredible. But yeah. you have to have the technical prowess, right? To be able to choose the right components. And Correct. But at the same time, like I'm sure a ton of people watching this video would be able to do that. Um, not me. But the, they're the ones that will appreciate that you peek at the hardware. Totally. Well, with that being said, do you want to go take yeah, a look? Yeah, let's go take a look. All right, so let's take a look at where the magic happens. Um, I'm not sure what you guys were expecting, whether it was like some massive L3 level uh, data center or a simple 42U rack like this, but this is really all we need. Um, up here is just our networking infrastructure. And the reason that I'm showing that is because I actually thought it was really interesting. We had to run 10 gigabit um, not just to every engineering station, but also to every area, like by the window, that we wanted to do any type of engineering. And the reason why is because moving around uh, these BSM files, they're 60, 70, 80 gigabytes each. And it just started to take forever if we had to move a terabyte of data over the network. So that was kind of a big hassle to run brand new 10 gigabit lines to you know eight or nine different points in the office. So that's kind of the, the backbone of that. And then let's take a look down here, which is where Skynet actually is. So you're going to see a bunch of different things down here. Um, this is Skynet right here. And then beneath it is uh, one of our NAS. This is where we store about, I think it's about 60 terabytes right now of data. This is a redundant server that backs up all of this. So we have another 60 terabytes or so there. I should think it might be a little bit less on this one because this isn't totally full. And then down here is simply our uninterruptible power supply. Um, funny story about Skynet is when we built this, uh, because of the components that we use, which is uh, three to four RTX 2080 Ti video cards, and then also the 32 core AMD Threadripper, we couldn't find any off the shelf cooling solutions <clears throat> that were designed to fit in this small space, things like a 4U uh, space. So we had to roll our own, and I would like to show you the world's most hacked together, not professional uh, AI trainer. That's right, we zip tied a liquid cooling system to the front of it. We just took the Dremel, hacked out the whole front of the case, and then uh, bought one of the few all-in-one liquid coolers that were rated for Threadripper. And it's worked awesome so far. It manages to sustain full load temps, and the GPUs barely even get above 70 or 75 Celsius, even under full load. So let's pull this out of the rack and take a look inside. All right, so I mentioned earlier when we were inside the server room that it was difficult to find a cooling solution that worked for this computer. And this case is pretty much the only one on the market that I found would work. There's a few things that were important to me. Um, I know I showed you guys the zip tied water cooler in the front. But there's actually two things in the back which are even more important. And the first one is this right here. So this is a dual 120 millimeter fan mount. And that's really, really rare to find inside a case designed to go, like a server case, to go into a rack. Normally, in a rack, you have several of these cases stacked on top of each other. So you couldn't get any airflow to here. Um, but this is perfect because, as I'll show you in a minute, the video cards, which take up a lot of heat and power, live right here. The second feature that was very important to me on this case was that we have actually eight um, PCI slots or expansion slots. A lot of cases on the market only have seven, and that would be a problem for us because I planned on using four video cards eventually. You can see we have three installed here, and each video card takes up two slots. That makes this case really unique because it has cooling to handle what we need and also can physically fit all of the cards. Opening up the case, we can take a look at the heart of the system. And that is a 32 core AMD Threadripper processor. Um, this right here is the water block that we currently have cooling it. And then around it, you can actually see a lot of memory. One of the cool things about the Threadripper platform is that in addition to supporting a lot of cores, it can support a ton of memory. So we have 256 gigabytes of memory for this. So half of it here and half of it on the other side right over there. Taking a look at a zoomed out view of the inside, here you can see everything, not just the CPU and memory that I've already showed you. Up here is kind of the foundation of the whole system, and this is a 1600 watt power supply. Uh, when you're using a lot of powerful components, 
like a 32 core processor in these video cards, it's important that you use a power supply that's big enough uh, to provide enough current for all the parts, but also can operate very well in hot conditions. Um, that Corsair power supply is one of the best ones on the market. I've been super happy with it so far and we haven't had any problems. And then looking down here, you can see the GeForce RTX 2080 Ti cards. Now, these are actually sold mainly as gaming cards. And it's interesting because they run about $1,300 each, $1,200 to $1,300. But the professional version of these cards um, is actually, they actually make one designed for AI acceleration, but it's almost the same thing. Runs about $2,500 each. And that's one of the cool things about being able to build a system yourself is that, yeah, maybe we lose about 10 to 15% performance versus a completely professional system, but we're doing this for 50% of the cost. So we actually do have four of these cards. I took one of them out, um, we brought it to SEMA with us, and we actually ran it in a system as a backup. If we had run into problems, we could have trained on the AI at SEMA, but it would have taken a lot longer than training like this. So these four cards right here are actually what do the majority of the work when you're training Ray. So I hope you guys enjoyed taking a quick look at the inside of our uh, AI training computer Skynet. And um, I hope you guys find it's interesting too that you don't need um, like a super professional data center with $20 million of computing equipment to train at AI. And I think this is one of the reasons that AI is going to become probably the most powerful and transformative technology of our time because somebody like Mindy, who decides she wants to spend a few thousand dollars on a computer, yeah can all of a sudden now train neural networks at home. You, you can train artificial intelligence using a zip tied water cooler and a 42U rack thrown in a random room in some office. Um, and to me, that's kind of democratization of technology, right? I mean- It was something in a movie 30 years ago. And yeah, now and, and you know, we don't have a hundred million dollars of cash to go build out some AI training facility, but we don't need to. Um, the computer's not cheap, uh, but it, it's attainable for a business and you can train them slower on more attainable computers. Anybody here that has a gaming computer and an NVIDIA video card can train artificial intelligence. Um, and that's just one more reason that we wanted to go open source as well. Who knows, maybe in five or six years, you guys at home will be training better AI than we will and having it live on Thea. Awesome. So yeah. Cool. Well, thanks for taking the time with us today and we'll talk to you guys soon. Thanks guys, take care. Uh, you wanna start over? We're starting uh, over. No, that was fine. No, too bad. We're starting over. <sighs> Mindy, <clears throat> just go with it this time. Fine, I'll go with it. Should I have like a Mindy voice on it? Yeah. yeah. Did you change your flux capacitor today? <clears throat> I'm full of the flux capacitor.